What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back at it again with another Copart Walker. I'll take a look at all the cars out here, guys. There, there are just there's so many cars out here. It's great. Wait, wait, wait. Who the heck is that? Ho, 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 ho. We got Michael from Santa's Workshop with us today, guys. How y'all doing? Man, uh, are you asking me or them? I'm doing great. Are, are you? I'm, I'm asking anybody. Oh well, I'm doing. I'm doing. I'm doing. It's a little warm. Oh, it ain't bad. <laughs> he did, You know why? Because he's been sitting in air conditioning the whole time. <laughs> and, yeah. No, he has. He's he he's been out here with me. Look, guys. I know you've seen all week. Michael's been with us. So do us a favor, man. Go subscribe to the man's channel. Go check out what he's working on because he's working on. Well, I'll let you tell him. You know better than I do. I can think of four different things you're working on right now. Four different things. Well, I got the 55 Chevy truck. Yep. Got the 53 Chevy truck. Yep. Got the 98 Mustang. Yep. What was the fourth one? The silver, double, double silver, double trouble. Double nickel? Double nickel? That's the 55 truck. Oh, that's the 55? Yeah. I can think of four. No, you're not working on the 53 Chevy car. No. No. Not yet. But you are going to be working on it because it needed some brake work or something, didn't it? Uh. Front suspension, the 52. 52. 52. Yeah. 52. Okay, so that I guess that doesn't count because he's not working on it yet, but not yet. You got a lot of stuff over there that you're working on. And Definitely. you got an uplifting video that Very is much so. by the time this video comes out, that was like a week ago. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> so you guys may have seen that video, but uh he kind of has a huge announcement over there. He got he got a new piece of equipment that's uh it's a pretty big oh, deal. It's a back saver. Yeah. And it's a, it's an uplifting big deal. Yes. So if you guys are subscribed, go check it out because honestly, it's it's going to be good, guys. It's going to be good. <laughs> I promise you. So go check them out. I'll have a link down below. Just click below the video, guys, and go check it out. We are going to jump into this. Oh, not a Cadillac. It's a Cadillac. It's a Cadillac. Number one on my list is a 2015 Cadillac ATS. It looks mean as hell. I'll be. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Like the way they did these headlights too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I gotta give them credit. It is a good looking car, and I already know what's under the hood. It's a 3.6 liter, which wah, 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 whatever. You know, it's 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 it, it 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 it's decent. It's got good enough horsepower, good enough torque. It's got a you know pretty big sunroof, and if you guys haven't seen the damage yet. Uh, it's hail. Go figure. It's hail. <laughs> Everything's hail. But it's a white car. Yes. If you don't really look, you're not going to see it. Yes. Yes. And Cadillacs, this is that, that pearlescent white. Mm -hmm. So in the sunlight, the problem is right now over here, there's no sunlight. Okay. But when you get a nice bright sunny day, the chances of you actually, and you wash the car, Chances of you seeing the damage, it's going to be slim to none, guys. So if you're ever looking for a hail damage car, I'm telling you this. If you were thinking about buying one, if you're on the fence, this might just be the one. This one right here might just be the one. It's a big car by today's standards, anyway. It's a big car. It's only got 35,000 miles. From a 2015, it needs a windshield. And as I say, you know, over and over again, if... You can't stand the hail damage on the hood, which honestly, honestly, the hail damage on this is just not that bad. Well, okay, it's, yeah, it's... That hood really isn't that bad. Yeah, the hood's not that bad. The fender almost looks like someone peppered, <laughs> the car looks like someone peppered it with, with hailstones. <laughs> she, oh. <laughs> this guy looks like buckshot. I was working in a body shop down in Ada for a Chevrolet dealership. This guy brings in his company truck. And all down the passenger side of it, I mean, it looks three times worse than this. Yeah. And I said, and, and this is in January. I said, where did you get into a hailstorm? He kind of hung his head and he said, my five-year-old come in with the ball peen hammer and said, I got the ice off your truck, daddy. Oh, no. He was trying to be helpful. He said, how do oh, I get mad at him? Oh, no. But it, I mean, he hammered that whole side of that truck. Oh, <laughs> well, hmm. He said, I mean, he said, I wanted to beat his tail in, but I wanted to hug him at the same time. <laughs> hey, that's what insurance is for, right? That's right. Uh, <laughs> explain that one to the insurance company. <laughs> my kid riddled my car with a hammer. Um, this one, this one, this one's not that bad, though, not guys. Not that bad. This one's not that bad. <laughs> Honestly, you throw a windshield in, just drive it. 
That's that's what I tell you with most of these. Most of them I don't think are worth. That's why they're here. They're here because the insurance company was like, no, it's not. We're not spending the money to PDR to replace panels. Mm -hmm. So they send it here. This is a great place to get these things at a huge discount from retail. But the, the best thing about hail for me is, okay, you could buy this car and you can rebuild it. But the thing is, like, it wasn't rebuilt with aftermarket parts, third-party parts, used parts. Bolts weren't taken off, and some of them forgotten to be put back on. This is the exact same car it was when it rolled off the Cadillac floor. Look at that interior. It's just got hail damage. Yeah, the interior is actually extremely clean. We'll fire it up. What do we got here, an estimate? Ah, we have, we have notes, we have keys. Hold on, what does all this say? Okay, this doesn't really say much other than, hey, I was hoping we had an estimate for like $20,000. Now look, this is how hot it's been getting in Oklahoma. Oh. All right, they leave these things up here and it contours to the dash. Okay, um, Randy, we, we got a theme going today, right? Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> Cannabis oil cartridge in this one contains THC. Okay, I want you to. Do you feel that vibration? Yep. There's a mount gone. Mm hmm. Like, it. Hold on. This thing really does have 35,000 miles on it. 35,000 miles, and we already have a motor mount or something. Or... Oh, yeah, you could feel that. That almost feels Ooh. Right. You don't think any somebody has enhanced this thing at all? Okay. No. Uh-uh. There's not really much you can do to this 3.5. It's a... Uh, or 3.6. It's kind of a... I mean, it's not a bad motor. It's just... It's, it's not something you can really... Ooh! Do much with. Ventilated seats? Yeah, I'll take those. Sure. Air conditioning. Oh, that's an immediate yes. No check engine light. But I have noticed in these in these Cadillac ATSs the same vibration. And you can feel. Surely in a Cadillac that would not be factory. To feel you I mean no. you can feel you could feel it in the steering, you could feel it in the seat, you could feel it in the floor. Pop the hood, let me wash that engine. 35,000 miles, that's insane. That is insane, that's low miles. And I'm telling you, there, there's something going on with it. I wonder what that is. I don't know. It doesn't feel normal to me. Uh -huh. But this is not the first. I mean, I'm, I think I felt it in almost all of them. So maybe it really is just how they... Maybe somebody out there owns one of these. Maybe somebody that's watching this video right now owns one of these. And they can come back and say, yes. Yes, believe it or not, that is how a Cadillac today feels. Look, look at this engine compartment, how clean that is. Yeah, it's beautiful. A little dusty, but I mean, you give it a nice little spray. I mean, it's 35,000 miles. This thing's got no miles on it. None. Six years old with 35,000 miles on it. It's got three years worth of mileage. So it's got about 50% of the miles that a similar car of this year would have. Good tires, really good tires actually. Those Bridgestones. Yes, we've got Bridgestones all the way around, front and back. I almost wonder what this car is going for right now. I'm a, uh, hold on, where's my phone? Where, where's my phone? I want to see what this car is going for right now. I know I was talking about the Mini Cooper, but suddenly I kind of, suddenly I kind of got a... Hankered for a CTS? Yeah. Oh, is this a CTS? Yeah. I called it an ATS, my bad, my bad. Man, it's a nice looking car too. Okay, so the Mini Cooper is at twelve hundred bucks. Oh, okay. This one is at fifty three. Fifty three hundred pure sale. There it is, guys. Fifty three hundred dollars pure sale on this one. 
The 09 Corvette is at 3,900. Then what about that turquoise Corvette? Is it 1,600 bucks? Wow. I don't need that, man. Dang it. Okay, we'll see. Oh, look, the did these just come on? These LEDs? I think so. I don't think those were on, were they? I didn't notice them. Neither did I. Yeah. Cloud cover. <sighs> yeah, yeah, cloud cover. Either that or the tag on the dash. Man, it is nice. That come from Falls Valley. <laughs> no kidding. Yep. Speaking of Paul's Valley. Oh yeah, speaking of Paul's Valley. As I was saying, speaking of cars and coffee, bef <laughs> before my camera overheated and shut, it, shut off again, there you're doing a cars and coffee. Yes. Uh, this weekend, actually. August 21st, Paul's Valley, Wacker Park. And look up Wacker Park, there's only one, one park by that name. I'm ever. sorry, Wacker Park? Wacker Park. Well, you know, because of the way things are today in Beavis and Butthead, when I hear Wacker Park and, and the Wackers, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, whack, whack, yeah, Wackers. Okay, Wacker, Wacker Park. Wacker Park. Paul's, Paul's Valley, Valley. August 21st. August 21st, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Okay, bring your car. Bring your car. Uh, and the coffee is provided. Free coffee and donuts while supplies last. Door prizes too, maybe, huh? We have door prizes okay. for all participants. Okay. Well, I might, I might just be there, guys. Maybe. Uh, I, you know, I heard Austin Carr is going to be there. Yes, Austin's, Austin's going to try his best to be there. Mr. Randy's going to be there. I might be there. <laughs> <laughs> I might drive the... Uh, oh, Lord. I don't know if I'll drive the 53 out there. Drive the 53. I, I don't know if he'll make it, honestly. Oh, if you get it to Byers, you're not that far. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll see, but but I'll be there. I'll be there, and Austin Carr may be there. Obviously, he's going to be there. He's hosting the thing. Yep. So a big shout-out to Michael for getting that set up, man. That's a that's actually a big deal out there because they don't have anything like that right no. now. Now, they have a car show about once a year, and that's about it. Yeah, so, so it's mean, a big deal for you to have accomplished, and you were on the radio recently too, yes. two twice, right? Uh, I'll be again this Thursday. Okay, this Thursday. KBLP. Yeah. So go look, go check. I'm telling you, he's doing big things, man. His channel's small right now, but I'm telling you, it's going places. So I think you should get in on it early. That way you can come back later and be like, "Look, man, I'm an OG subscriber. Can I get a door prize or something?" <laughs> no, don't do that. Don't don't do that to him. But anyway, get in on that, guys, and uh, hopefully we'll see you there this weekend at Wacker Park in Paul's Valley. Let's move on. I don't even know what the next one is, but let's move on to whatever the next one is. I'm very seriously considering, and this is why I decided to come look at it because in the pictures, it uh, in the pictures it looks pretty bad, right? It really does, and it does have considerable damage. Obviously, at first glance, you can see the bumper is done. Fog lights are hanging out, so just assume you need both fog lights. Headlights are missing, so probably needs headlights. The hood is trashed. Come over here, you see this damage to the fender, so you know that's trash. And then you come over here to this pillar. Ouch. Uh, it's been pushed back and kinked. The windshield is busted. And then you've got all this damage under here. This uh, like header panel or upper core support, whatever you want to call it is, I mean, that's obviously trashed. Your condenser is all tweaked. That's done. The radiator obviously is going to be done too. All the plastics and stuff are all done. And then you get over here and okay, you got air conditioning lines that are broken bent there's a there's a little bit of damage here nothing to but the fender aprons on both sides are good frame rails are straight frame rail extensions are good so that's some good news okay let's stop talking about the bad stuff and let's focus on the good it looks like it was a really high hit very odd almost like it ran up under a truck is what you yeah, were saying yeah, yeah kind of like it ran up on hit the brakes ran up under a truck maybe um this fender survived. It, it does have a little bend right here, but you know, honestly, who it, who cares? Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't think we're gonna be too picky. It's got seventy thousand miles. It's got a good set of tires. Uh, looks like we got Nexons all the way around. Coming around the back, 
I mean, very, very clean Those back tires here. Are brand new, Randy. Brand new tires. Yeah, still got the knobs on them. Okay. All right. A little bit of damage right here. Run your hand on that. I mean, they put those on, I think, the day of yeah. the wreck. <laughs> yeah, she's got new tires. And it looks like we got some of the parts in the trunk, so maybe some of it's salvageable. Then again, maybe not. I'm sure these headlights aren't cheap. Yeah, we got broken tabs. Okay, broken tabs. Yeah, that's never a good sign. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> dear! <laughs> Oop, biohazard, biohazard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, deer there's blood. deer hair and deer blood on the headlight assembly. Okay, so, okay, okay, so it wasn't another car. That makes me feel even better. It's just a deer. That headlight is so almost savable. Yeah. Um, it's just a couple broken tabs, which I'm sure something could be manufactured to, to, to make it work. Now, now, here's something interesting. See your weather wear on uh -huh. top of this one? And that one has none. This one has none. But it is a genuine Ford part. Yes, it is. So at least it was replaced. Maybe it was in an accident before. I don't know. It's got the subwoofer back here too. And of course, being a Ford Focus ST, it is a stick shift. And it's got that, well, it's got, it's got a pretty nice engine. The interesting thing about this also is that it says it doesn't run. Uh, I'm, I don't see any reason why this wouldn't run. Um, it did blow, it did blow, oh, well, the pre-tensioner's blown on the seat belt. Yep, that's a wrap. So, but that's okay, I've got a connection that'll rebuild the seat belts and airbags for me and airbag control module, so yeah. we can, we these can are, handle that. These are Recaro seats, yep. too. Yep, yep. Wow. Yeah, this is a, this is a performance car. It is, she's a, she's a beast. <sighs> Boy, these seats hug you. Wow. Like, let me scoot this back just a, a little here. There we go. Okay. 70,000 miles. She's got a little bit of mileage. Broken intake. Yep. Yeah. Broken intake. Fire it up one more time. Yeah. Oil pressure went up. That's good. So it runs. It sounds decent. It runs. <laughs> it runs. Oh, oh, man. Now, this could be a fun car. You know, I don't think the bids are going to go. I, I shouldn't even have said that because now it's just going to bite me in the rear. But the, I think the worst part for me, the, the this is all this is all bolt on stuff, guys. Like all of this, all of this, this is all very simple bolt on stuff. Anybody could do this in their driveway. Like you don't need a shop or a garage to do this. The 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 worst part for me though is this. And see, to me, that's that's a that one there is a non-issue. That's not an issue for no, you because you can see on the other side, this is hollow. You can get to it from the inside. So you could you could. You could actually, work that out from the inside. You could get something inside, get you a. Uh, oh yeah, like the deep PDR guys. Right. Use. Well, you know, you get you a, a pivot point. Right. And then you tap this down, work it out, and then you're not going to be able to get it as close no. as you want, but you can put filler on it. And well, that's the thing out. with a car like this. I, I, you should never buy a wrecked car with the expectation of it being perfect as if it rolled off the showroom floor and is brand new. Fact of the matter is every used car, I don't, if you pick any one of them out here, even one that's not wrecked, used cars are not perfect. No. In fact, I've had new cars that, that not were not perfect, that had gap issues, Yeah. all right? Like body panels that just didn't line up perfectly like you would expect. It's the nature of mass produced cars. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want a car that's perfect all the way around, buy yourself something like a brand new Lamborghini, a brand new Ferrari. Those cars, well, my camera does what it did best and you know, it shut off on me again. What I was trying to say is, you know, if you want a pristine, perfect car, you're gonna have to spend a lot of money for, for, for one, guys. And uh, something like this, yeah, it's a nice car, but it's used and it's got some miles. It's got 70,000 miles on it. And you could see before the accident even occurred, you know, she's, got, she's got dings. In fact, I don't know if you guys can even see that, but she does have, she's got a nice ding right there. There's another one right here. And the deer didn't do this. Now, I don't know. That that actually this looks kind of fresh. 
So I don't know if somebody was throwing something in the car, or carrying something, and knocked into it. But you know, and it could have been they raised the, the hatch up. Yeah, and hit something. And hit something. Yeah. Uh, big scratch down. The, yeah, big scratch down the side right here as well. You know, so it's not a perfect car already. And that makes me feel a little bit better about, hey, we could just throw some parts on it. Oh, yeah. And it'll, I mean, it, I guarantee you when it's done, it won't look like this. Okay. <laughs> At the end of the day, as long as it's got a front end back on it again, and it runs and, uh, you know, drives like it's supposed to, who cares? It doesn't have to be perfect, man. This is a project. It's something you buy to fix up and play with. It's a toy. It's something to have fun with. Oh, and another thing. It's got a good battery. It's got a good battery. Yep, because she definitely started. You just don't want to let it run long. But well, I guess ultimately it would just bounce off the rev limiter. Yeah. But we, we you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Not, so Not cold anyways. Yeah. That's it for this one, guys. Comment below if you want to see the Focus ST on the channel. Because I can promise you, as soon as I get home, I'm going to start looking for parts for this car. Next on my list, the 2015 Mustang GT Performance Pack. No, I'm kidding. It's, it's probably the V6. It's a 2015, so I'm going to guess it's the V6. It does have the wheels of a performance pack, though. Those really do look like performance pack wheels. Okay, not too bad. It just took a light hit to the back end. It's nothing. That's nothing. In fact, you could just put the bumper back on it. Yeah, well, oh, wait, oh. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I'm standing right here, and I'm, I'm looking at the buckle back here, and I'm like, okay, it took a little harder hit <laughs> than I thought, because, I mean, my eyes shifted straight to this buckle, and I was like, oh, man, and somehow I missed this. <laughs> I, I don't... <laughs> wow. Ouch. And, you know, originally, I thought this was here for hail damage. It's riddled in hail, so I was like, oh, okay, no big deal. It's a hail damage car. That's fine. Um, you, I, don't, I don't think a door is going to fix that one. This car has had a rough life. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it got hailed on. Oh, it took a hit in the front, too. The front end hit a wall or something. The back end either hit or got hit by something. The side got like... <laughs> I'm dying to know what's under the hood, though. There you go. Turbo Eco Beast, baby. The Turbo 4. What is it, like 300 and something horsepower from this? Yeah. And it's a teeny tiny turbo. But look at all the oil that's spraying around it. Yeah, I'm guessing this has some miles on it. Optima Red Top back in 2015. That's no good anymore. Yeah, there's a lot of oil under here. This thing's got some miles on her. Yep. Well, the, the orange color just got me, man. It, it pulled me in with that orange and the wheels. I wonder if it was a, a premium package. Let's take a look. Yep, it was. It says Mexico, uh, Mexico Racing League. Uh, okay, I guess, sure. There's razor blade on the floor. Some broken lights, lots of blown bags. It was the premium edition, though. So at least it was a, like, it was top notch. Was. Not no more. Moving on. Now, this is one that we briefly covered in a previous video. We just basically walked by it, but I decided to do a little more research on it. I ran it on autoauctions.io, and I found that it's a New York car. It was sold with an MV107, I think is what those are called up there. Um, basically salvaged back in the day, many years ago, it had rear end damage. And then it came back a few years later with all of this damage. And it was back up for sale again. And then somehow, well, I, we haven't figured that out yet, but it made it from New York to Oklahoma. And the mileage hasn't changed in three years. Okay, so for three years, the mileage hasn't budged. The interesting thing also is that when it was back up for sale as salvaged in New York a second time, the damage to the driver's side was there. But all of this damage, this was not here. The bumper, the headlight, the fender, none of this damage was here 
in the auction from New York the second time it was salvaged. So this damage, and there's no miles on it. It's not been driven since then. So this damage came from something else, a transporter, somebody backed right over it is honestly kind of what it looks like. The, you want to talk about a car that had a hard life. <laughs> you know, and it looks like something just grazed this fender because, I mean, you have no damage here. Right. No damage on the hood. But look how this thing is buckled. Yes. And then it comes back onto the door. And rips a hole in both doors. And Maserati parts are not cheap. They're not cheap. Now, the only thing this car really has going for it is the fact that it's got no miles. 21,000 miles on this. Wow. Like, that is insane low miles. This window, I guess, is gone. I'm, oh, yeah, it's shattered. You can see the glass in there. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, there's only one thing to do. We want to hear this run. I am kind of intrigued by this car, and it's it's very, very bad history. It... I kind of like it. Like, I kind of like the history of this car. It's it's so bad that it makes me, you know, want to try it out. The interior is honestly not bad. It needs a good cleaning. No bags are blown. What on earth? <sighs> Again, it's, well, I to explain to me what this is. It's one of those things where I'm going to have to look up the parts first, you know, before we get into this too much. Look at the floorboard there. Oh, that is an emergency release for the transmission. Okay. I believe that's what the, the red, and they put a, they put this on it too. Yeah, this should be like an emergency neutral, or it could be for the e-brake. If it has an electronic parking brake, I bet that's what it okay. is. If you got an electronic parking brake that somebody locked and you got no power, right. this would be the only way to release it. That's what that's going to be. On newer cars, uh, Fords, I think, there is a similar thing over there with a red handle. You pop the cover off, there's a red lever like this. You okay. pull it and it'll put the, the transmission into neutral for you. you Let's see if we could find a... Well... Uh-oh. I would love to find, there's the hood release. I mean, I have a hard time believing it doesn't run. I think that's that's my issue. I, I just can't believe that a 20,000 mile, hey, that engine don't look like 20,000 miles. No. That does not look like 20,000 miles to me. That is, uh, <laughs> you know what? I think I know what happened. What is, is that oil? Yeah. Clean. That is very clean. Very clean oil. You know, what gets me though is you see all the, all the, the writing. That, that doesn't come from factory guys. It's, it's on all of it. You've got your cam actuators here. They've got arrows and stuff on them. Same thing over here. I'm certain that is not factory. So what I'm wondering is maybe somebody bought this and they pulled the power plant out of it because it only had 20,000 miles. And dropped the other one in. And they put it in their Maserati because this one was just too far gone for them. And then they threw this pretty engine cover back over it. Right? And... Uh, Look at that, brand new engine. They got them a brand new engine and they put one that may be broken. And it, honestly, that seems like a lot of work, but I don't know how much a Maserati engine's worth. 20,000 mile engine at that may be worth a lot of money. Yeah. So you know what? It says it doesn't run. Let's put a jump pack on it and let's find out if it runs. I'm, I'm curious, man. I wanna know, I wanna know. I think this thing sold for like 5,000, $4,000, something like that. Oh wow. Just a couple, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'm, if it's not going to go for much, it's one I'm definitely, I'm definitely interested in. All right, we got the boost pack on. This poor car, like you could, you could just look at this car and see how bad of a life it had. <laughs> yeah, oh, it needs so much, man. It needs so much. And oh, I got nothing. 
I, I don't even have no nothing wait yes things are uh you were right the first time oh to the strut tower yep hey well there you go it's not often i hear that so i'll take it man i'll take it okay so we have a fob and i'm assuming there yeah there's the push to start That doesn't sound good. No. That uh, and my booster pack is strong, man. It'll it'll start a turbo diesel with no issues. I uh, I think he was right in assuming someone pulled the motor and switched it out and brought it back to factory. Yep. Back to auction. Yep. Uh, stop it, Randy. I'm smelling gas hard. Okay. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Oh wow. Smell it. I hear it dumping. You hear that? Uh -huh. The fuel rail's not even connected. Yeah, I smell gas just uh gas is dumping somewhere. You could hear it gurgling. Here's the fuel rail. Man, that's a massive fuel rail. Wow. Yeah, so the fuel rail is uh, is disconnected somewhere. Don't know where. Wow. Mm. I've only, of all the years I've been out here doing this, I've only had that happen one time where a card was just, the, the fuel line was actually cut and when you turned it on, it just dumped fuel right out of it. Yeah, a little dangerous. A little dangerous. Eight. Usually they have a safety switch to keep that from happening. What's funny? Is right here on the windshield it says needs jump <laughs> not this one <laughs> <Need more to jump. laughs> not this one oh uh, well you know yeah i'm thinking someone swapped that uh someone swapped that motor out man and uh oh well i was hopeful you don't know until you try you know what i mean it's worth a shot as you can see, look, the plastic is going right back where it was, and we didn't have to cut a hole in it and rip it apart. You know, come on, be be courteous, guys. Okay, that's it for the the man. I'm disappointed. I really, I was really hoping it's gonna fire up, and it'd be like our little secret. Yeah. <laughs> and it goes for nothing, and we bring it home, put a fender and a couple doors on it or something. Or no, I'll just get some duct tape, put them over those holes in the doors, and spray paint it black. You know, put a couple fenders and a bumper on it. Down the road you go. Not so lucky this time. We still have a Ford Focus to think about, though. Yep. So that's that's promising. Let's uh, let's go over to the motorcycles. It's in the week with motorcycles. All right, guys. You know what? It's time for motorcycle time. And you know what that means? Ninety-nine percent Harley Davidsons. Yep. Night. I think we got we we got a we got a couple other bikes out, but for the most part, you're gonna find Harley Davidson. Is this a uh, is this looks like what do they call this a fat bob something like look at these look at these uh wrapped i mean there's they're really not header this is just it's just an, it's just a pipe i guess they'd call them headers they still uh, call them headers well, i don't pipe. it's just a pipe yeah literally one pipe one pipe that's that's it with this gold wrap i hate seeing these though man look i mean the forks are bent bad yeah, they, they hit something hard like, real hard yeah that's a shame man that's a shame it's a yamaha bolt i'm sitting here looking at it wondering what is this thing i kind of like it it's very minimalistic it's very slim in the middle like it looks like you can just hop on and go bolt you got you hop on and just, just hop on a bolt. bolt man yeah and we got some white walls over here too man uh i still i somebody explained it to me before but i still don't know the difference between an electro glide and a street glide now, I know what a Road King is. I can I can spot those a million miles away now. <laughs> I know what a Sportster is. I can spot that a million miles away. But when it comes to these, and Harley-Davidson is real awesome about this. They give you these weird, like this is an 04 Harley, but if it's an F-L-H-T-C-U-I. Huh? Okay, only people that really know Harleys are going to know, Randy, that right there is an Electroglide. Yeah. They'll be able to look at that and tell you that. Me, I'm... 
Um, it's a flip. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. If I want to do something fast and stupid, I want to have four wheels and steel around me. Oh, <laughs> uh, you got to learn to get out of your cage, man. Oh, get out of. We, I'm happy in my cage. We need to go back to what well, was that car that had the doobie in it? Which one was that? The uh, <laughs> the. Yeah. That was your uh, little uh, the the Cooper the yeah. mini the mini Cooper. Mini Cooper. And we need to get you a little bit of that, and then come back and we'll talk about how you're you're being imprisoned by your cage, man. You gotta let loose. You gotta ride the lightning. I only let loose once a year. That's on Christmas Eve when I deliver <laughs> the toys. You know? Then I let the reindeer do all the driving. <laughs> oh man. I, 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 I love my motorcycles. I do, although I, I'll be honest, I haven't told anybody this yet, but I am considering getting rid of my bike. Um, number one, I don't ride it ever. It's got like 280 miles on it. Oh. I never ride it. And lately when I do go out and ride it, I start thinking like one mistake on my end, on somebody else's end, and it could really be over for me. And while I love riding the bike, to me it's selfish. It's selfish for me to put my life at risk because, you know, Jessica obviously cares a ton about me. And wouldn't it suck to lose my life and take away from her, you know, the ability to spend the rest of our lives together. Right. Because I wanted to go ride a motorcycle and be cool for a minute. Uh, that's, it, it's, it, I've been thinking about, I've been thinking about that a lot, you know, my own mortality a lot. I guess that happens in your 40s. You start kind of thinking, huh. Should I really be out riding around on a motorcycle? Probably not. And then when you get to my age, you just say, the heck with it, I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that called a midlife crisis? No, that's that's in between the two. Okay. We're, that's I, after the midlife crisis. I'm still learning. I got to take lessons from him. He's, he's a couple years older than me. He's got a little more life experience than I do. But I'll tell you what, though. Um, I still do ride my bike when I when I find the time, which is the main issue. I don't ride. I don't ride. It's not that I'm afraid of it. I just don't have the time anymore. I, well, I never did. I never did. It's just something I wanted to do, and I did it, and now it's like, okay, well. We got a lot of nice bikes out here, though. This one right here, man. That is beautiful. Uh, look at all of them. There's Silver Bullet right there. I think I've been eyeballing this one for a long, 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 long time, and it's still here. Look, they got LED lights on this. Look at this. Oh my goodness, maybe this isn't the same one. Yeah, maybe that's not the same one. There's just something about motorcycles though, man, that are just, it, they're sexy. And I, I, I'm never the type that's sitting here going, oh, Indian sucks, it's all about the Harley, man. Or Yamaha sucks, man, I don't, I don't care. Honestly, it doesn't matter to me. I think this is a beautiful bike right here. That's a nice looking bike. It's kind of like with cars, you know. I hate people that are so closed minded that it's like Chevy only, Mopar, no car. Even though I've been guilty of saying that myself, I don't mean it. I never, I don't mean it. Like, I, I love cars in general. I love bikes in general too. Even these, even though I don't understand why you would want a Hayabusa, uh, you know, for those that do, a GSX 1300R. This thing is in it. Well, it was an insane monster. What's the speedometer go to? 185. Yeah, 185. See, I'd like to get this and build a go kart out of it. Okay, you could do that. Build a trike too. Do, do a couple of you know small drag slicks on the back. Yeah. Take that thing out to the drag strip. This thing would be a nightmare, man. Even with four wheels, it'd be a nightmare. But whoa, look at this. That's a Heritage Softail. Oh, you know what? I've seen this before. I've seen this before. This has been out here before. I love these these pipes, man. It's something about it, Everything about this bike just looks old school. Probably because it, it is old school. I don't know what year this is. We'll take a look. We'll take it. It's a night. Okay, it's not that old school. It's 1995. It's a non-runner. It's got 41,000 miles on it. Look how it's small. I mean, this is like compared to my road. My road king's like a bike. You gotta yeah. really stretch. This thing is tiny. Like you could just hop on this, and it's like really. There's nothing to it, man. Nothing to it. Oh wow, squeaky, squeaky. Yeah. The handlebar is cracked. This thing is a. Uh, I'm guessing somebody ran into something. I don't know. It's all. 
fender on the back is smashed. Smashed on the back side. Okay. Okay. Well, let's hope that the kickstand doesn't fail because that thing looks a little. Ooh. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> I think that kickstand's a tad bit worn out, man. If it, my bike did that, on a downhill slope. <laughs> Whoo! If my bike did that, I, I I probably just wouldn't set it down. I I'd, I'd move it somewhere else. Oh, uh, we got the Vox, the Vanderhall. I almost called it a Vauxhall. It's a it's a Van or is it a Vauxhall? Oh, it's Vanderhall. Vanderhall Venice. It's still sitting here. The star is still sitting here. A lot of these bikes. We've got the uh, Aprilia. Aprilia sitting over here, another Italian motorcycle. Another CBR. I mean it's all, you know, it's all the same. I really like the CBRs. I think those are those are real mean looking crotch rockets, man. Big cruisers. Oh wow. This is new. A victory? No, a, Val a Valkyrie. Honda. I don't remember this one. This is a Honda? Really? Wow. This is a, I mean, this is a big bike. This is a big bike. What year is this? 99 GL 1500. <laughs> that thing's got a flat six. Look at the radiator. It's almost as big as my 53 car. <laughs> Holy crap. Look at this radiator. Wow. The, the, this thing looks like a monster. It's listed as a as a runner too. Uh, you know, it ain't gonna hurt nothing. Just you know, just let's just find out, man. Oh, oh, bad time to get a cramp in my left leg. Oh, 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 oh. We got power, baby. Is this fuel injected or carbureted? If it's carbureted, there'll be a. Yep, it's carbureted. Fuel. It's on. All right. Well, all I got to do now is figure out which one of these many, many, many buttons is the starter. There's a lot of buttons. Oh, I bet it's this one right here. What do you think? Hmm. There we go. Hang on. Oh, I wonder what that is. Maybe that's the fuel injection. Oh, it tried. I bet you that's a kill switch. Well, 150,000 miles. Wow. 150,000 miles, guys. Somebody's put a ways on that one. Wow. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to completely kill it here. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I don't hear a. We'll go ahead and just shut it off. It does say it runs, though. It says it runs. Can I get off this thing? Yes, I can. Man, I love this bike. All right, let's go outside. See if they got. Oh no! There's a. I hate seeing a motorcycle laying on its side, man. But th yeah, okay. Well, I guess this one's acceptable. I don't think this one has much choice. USAA, military. Okay, and when I come out here and I see these, mm -hmm. this is what really just... You don't stand a chance on a bike, man. And honestly, people don't give a... They don't give a crap about you being on a bike, neither. All right, guys, GoPro overheated. Now, you're a witness. Yes, yes, and it's not that bad. Right. I mean, it, 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 it is warm, but it's not... It, it's just it's ridiculous man so the gopro basically said the video is over it's it, the gopro is done for the day so we're going to get out of here guys thank you so much for watching be sure to check out santa's workshop on youtube link down below don't forget uh wacker park wacker park the August 21st, 21st 8 a.m to, 8 10 to 10 a.m in paul's valley i would love to see you guys there uh if you don't already subscribe to the channel consider hitting that subscribe button i truly appreciate it follow me on facebook instagram tiktok auto auction rebuilds and until next time stay safe out there everybody i look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one